All right, let's um, look into what's happening in the auto industry. German auto bosses are visiting the White House today, and um, what little is known about the meeting, it is drawing criticism from the EU. Why is it so controversial? Well, because auto bosses from Germany don't really have a mandate to talk about tariffs, and that's apparently the big issue on the agenda, um, tariffs that... Donald Trump wants to slap on um, the European Union. But that's not theirs to negotiate. It is the EU Commission's um, uh, task to negotiate. So the big question is, what does, he, um, what does Donald Trump then really want? Um, there's two possibilities, really. One is that um, he wants to divide the, the parties, um, bring up German automakers against the EU, and, and um, uh, by threatening these tariffs, trying to um, make them knock on Berlin's and Brussels' doors to say, hey, can we give some concessions to the U.S. to make this better for us? The other is that he may be looking um, to present himself as a dealmaker once again and um, ask German automakers for more investments. You don't go to the White House without gifts, right? So um, he might be looking for a shift in, in production or some of the planned expansions in, in Turkey, for example, to move to the U.S. Either way, it looks like German automakers cannot win this game that Trump is playing, and so auto shares are down today. All right, thank you, Paul, for your time. Enjoy the rest of the day. In Asia, stocks mostly slipped today amid uncertainty about the future of U.S.-China trade relations. Japan's Nikkei 225 fell by 2.39%, while the Topics Index shed 2.36%. Meanwhile, in South Korea, the Kospi slipped 0.82%. Hong Kong's Hanseng Index slipped 0.22%. In the mainland Chinese markets, the Shanghai Composite rose 0.42% and the Shenzhen Composite advanced 0.43%. Over in Australia, the ASX 200 fell 1.01%, with almost all sectors lower on the day. And in the U.S., stock futures pointed to a negative open amid questions over whether the U.S.-China trade agreement will resolve the two countries' dispute in the long term. At around 4.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Dow Jones Industrial Average Futures were trading 157 points lower, implying a negative open of 153 points. S&P 500 and Nasdaq Futures were also in the red. On the earnings front, AutoZone, Dollar General and Total Toll Brothers are reporting results before the bell, while Hewlett Packard Enterprise and MongoDB post their financials after the bell. In terms of economic data, Redbook sales figures are due at 8.55 a.m. Eastern Time. Meanwhile, New York Federal Reserve President John Williams is due to give a speech on tightness in the labor market at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Well, let's look at what's happening in the world of commodities. And from next week, we will begin to see a lot of hustle and bustle in preparation for the Christmas and end of the year festivities. And it's tradition. And in its tradition, financial derivatives company conducted its survey on domestic commodity prices. The survey is also what the company uses in its monthly inflation projections. Well, one of the research analysts at FDC, Toby Loba Ogumpalu, joins me now to tell us more about some of your findings. Hello, Toby. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, in your survey, you reported that some commodities such as tomatoes and pepper have recorded a decline in price. Is this not an anomaly, especially as the festive season approaches? Well, yes. According to our survey, the price of some commodities declined. For example, tomatoes declined from about 10,000 10, naira to about 8,000 naira. We've seen that the price of pepper to also declined to about 8,000 naira from 10,000 naira. Gary also declined to about 12,500 12, naira from 13,000 naira. But the price of onions remained flat at 35,000 naira. So as we know, this is unusual because during the Christmas season, we expect the price of these commodities to increase. But the reason for this decline is, one, the impact of flood has been muted. We know that the flood that happened a few months ago has subsided, then, has subsided rather. Then the communal crisis have, have also reduced. Then production has also improved in the period. So we know that these factors have had an impact on prices. 
Okay, now considering your recent survey, what is FDC's inflation forecast for the month of November and um, what factor do you see driving uh, November inflation? Okay, yes, um, I've obviously been projecting uh, an increase to about 11.27%. And um, we, we need to understand that there are two factors that, are, that affect the um, inflation figures. So the first one is the output. So as output increases, then inflation decreases. Then we also know that money supply is also a, um, a trivial issue. If money supply increases, inflation would also increase. So we've established that the price of commodities in the period declined. But we, we need to factor in the price of the, the money supply in the period. So we notice that um, in Nigeria during election period, we know that this is always this is usually characterized by increased spending. We know that the presidential candidates would go from state to state, and logistics and general spending will increase. Also, we know that state um, candidates would also go from local government to local government, and also logistics and money supply would increase generally. Then we know that this period is. Um, this period is characterized by spending due to Christmas and, and um, New Year. We, we see a lot of families and companies build up or buy, buy commodities such as rice, oil, and chicken in stock. So we know that money supply due to all this is the reason for our forecast for about 11 to about 11.27. So rather than, rather than increase in food inflation, we, we, see, we will see an increase in money supply, and this would impact the, the, the um, inflation figure. So let's look at um, one of the burning economic issues, and that's all marketers have given the FG a seven-day ultimatum to settle outstanding debts, totaling about um, 800 billion naira, and they say failing to do so, depots will seize operation across the country. Will this lead to a fuel shortage and um, impact on fuel prices? Okay, yes, we but this definitely leads to panic buying because before the ultimatum, we see a lot of people queue up for fuel. But we do not expect this to be prolonged because we know election is in February. And apart from that, NNPC has also declared that they would they, they are they are able to be able to to be able to sell for for the next 30 days, even if there is for scarcity. So we know that the immediate impact of this would be that transport fare would increase. For example, in December 2017, when a similar situation happened, um, fuel price increased by about 50%, and the, the um, transport fare also doubled. But we do not expect, like I said, we do not expect the scarcity to be prolonged because we know that the federal government will want to avert anything that would hinder people from voting in February 2019. All right, thank you, Toby Loba, for your time. Toby Loba is one of the research analysts with Financial Derivatives Company. After the break, we will cross over to the Nigerian Stock Exchange for today's market update. Do stay with us. <laughs>